Hello, I'm Dan Ring, and welcome to the second tutorial in Nuke's new planar tracker. In this tutorial, we're going to look at tracking multiple layers. Here we want to track the front of this boat in order to put a logo onto it. But if we look through the shot, we can see it becomes occluded by this suspension cable. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can use track layering to get a better track. First, I'll show you what happens if we try to track the boat without using layers. So let's start by creating our planar tracker. Now we can make an observation here that will help our tracking. If we look at the sides of the boat here, we can see that they're roughly on the same plane as the area we want to place our logo. By including other areas that belong to the same plane, we'll end up with better distributed feature tracks and usually a better overall planar track. So let's draw these areas in too. I can also see that there's not really much change in perspective of the front of the boat over the course of the shot. So this means we can lock our apparent motion type to shear. I'm also going to rename this layer to boat. At this point, you might be tempted to say, the cable doesn't ever fully occlude the front of the boat, so why can't you just track normally? Well, in some cases you can get away with it, particularly if the surface of the occluding object is small. But let's see what happens when we try to track now. Straight away, we can see that the cable wipes out the track. To fix this, we're going to create a holdout for the cable. Better still, we're going to track the cable and use the track as our holdout. To do that, we create a new track layer. The easiest way to do this is to select the new track layer from the layer selector, and then just start drawing. I'm going to draw a wide border around the cable to give the features on the boat a decent buffer zone. And I'm going to rename the layer to Cable. If we scrub through the footage, we can also see that the cable doesn't change its shape or orientation much. This means that we can lock the apparent motion type to T plus scale. This means it will only track changes in translation and scale, and usually results in a much better track. This is particularly useful on flat, featureless surfaces, such as the cable. Now, let's click the Track to End button and watch it go. So this looks like a pretty reasonable track, and importantly, it covers most of the overlap area between the cable and the boat. Now when using layers, the important thing to remember is that the track shape in each track layer will hold out all the track layers below. For example, because our cable layer is above the boat layer, the boat shape will have the cable shape removed from it. This is different from the way you might create a regular holdout in the roto node. It also works for many layers at a time. The idea is to order your layers in the curves menu by their distance from the camera, so that the object drawn in the topmost track layer is closest to the camera, in our case, our cable layer, and the furthest away object we want to track is in the bottommost layer, in our case, our boat layer. So now our holdout track is done, let's go back and retrack our boat layer. We'll start by clearing all the track data to be safe, and then clicking track to end. You can see that this time the track is perfect. Now let's put our logo on. As in the previous tutorial, we'll select our read node and export a corner pin using the absolute mode. We now go back to our reference frame and adjust our planar surface to where we want to place our logo. We can also use the grid to help us align up our surface. Now that looks pretty good. We now create a merge node and connect it up, setting our input B to our roto node and our input A to our corner pin. We'll also move it to a sensible place in the node graph to make it look a little less messy. So we're nearly done. However, if we look at our output, we can see that the logo is appearing over the cable. Clearly we want to hold out the cable for our comp, and we can actually use our existing track result to do that. Going back to our cable track shape, we can tighten it up a bit and use it directly as a mask. Now let's set the alpha component of the shape's colour to zero.
So now let's look at the alpha channel of our rotor node. So I think this is exactly what we want. Now if we go back to our merge node, we can set the mask to RGBA alpha. And if we connect that, that to the viewer, we should see that we have a nice holdout. We just have to tweak the roto shape of the cable a little bit. So that seems to look much better. Now let's clear the drawing handles and put this on a loop so we can see our comp better. I'm very happy with that track. And so that concludes our second tutorial for Nuke's Planar Tracker.